this was pushing the envelope. Uh, not very many people in this part of the world would have recognized this as art at all. They would have been insulted at the suggestion that it be considered art. Um, I hear these are still live issues. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if you look at this image, it's as if the geometric parts are doing their very best to take control of the amorphous areas, softer, bigger, less well-defined areas of color that are threatening to come through and move this way and that way and to escape from the network of crisscrossed lines. Johnson was to explore this visual idea um, in depth uh, in the early 1960s. How much can form control what color is doing and how strong can you make color in order for it to take precedence over form. A conversation between two abstract things, but a conversation nonetheless. Um, Snow, unlike uh, many artists, created conversations between, not necessarily people, but between pieces of furniture or inanimate objects like uh, table utensils, curtains, chairs. Um, at uh, a certain point in his career, he began to paint, rather than print, but began to paint lithograph, paint uh, pictures of chairs that look eerily organic, lifelike. He also printed chairs that look eerily lifelike. Um, in fact, there is a strange thing in the art of John Snow in that often his figures are very wooden and very primitive and very lifeless looking. They can look like paper cutouts um, and they stand very still and they don't really look alive at all. Whereas the chairs look like they're, the blood is pumping and the muscles are contracting <laughs> and the attitude is coming out and the shoulders are moving. It's a very interesting phenomenon. Um, I think you can see a little bit of that uh, tendency in this particular uh, lithograph. Also in this lithograph, called Blue Ball, you can see um, the experimentation with holding color into the network of lines. Here we have a bowl that harbors probably a ladle. Um, it could be a punch bowl. And the ladle, for some reason, has decided to admire this very small orange jug very much. <laughs> and you couldn't, what a, what a beautiful jug that is, and how uh, sensuous this line, and how delicate the handle emerging from the bag, and how, how beautifully decorated the surface with small um, dots that are actually. Uh, uh, made when water, droplets of water, water gathered on a oily surface. Um, anyway, this lady uh, very enthusiastically approaching this lovely jug with questions one might imagine probably should discuss openly. Um, the jug is, is uh, genteely recoiling from the overtures of this, this entity which she feels not worthy of her in some way. Um, and this, this is a perpetual situation here with these two um, objects never will be resolved. Anyway, this is a kind of, um, as well, this image is a kind of visual pun because in the later 1950s, um, probably none of you are old enough to remember back that far, but there was a great fashion for um, bric-a-brac shelves made out of dark um, wood. Uh, it's that set uh, into uh, set on top one piece plank on top of another to make these uh, different size squares and rectangles. There are spaces you can put, you can put decorative objects and all sorts of dishes, and things like that. So he's really 
representing one of those shells with things in it, but he's also um, holding the objects into the picture plane with the shelf, the lines that are in the shelf. And it's really nice to look at. And that color is very luminous, it's very beautiful, it's very, somehow to me, classical. It has a serene sort of balance to it. Um, at this one, a big award. So uh, his contemporaries were not blind to this, this sort of thing, and, and uh, people recognized his John Snow's ability to animate space and objects and color, relationships between colors and colors. Questions, comments? I can just sort of keep going at it. Exactly from above. Uh, for us, we see that at 90 degrees um, to the picture plane. Uh, we're very used to seeing things in this way. Now, it's a, this is the kind of modernist language that most of us grew up with. Um, we don't tend to walk into an exhibition and look at a still life and say, that makes no sense whatsoever. I see the jug from the side, but I'm seeing the plate from above. There must be something wrong with the arts or ourselves or the curator. Um, that really, that kind of reaction was something um, common in the late 19th century. But ever since then, uh, we've become accustomed to looking at things set out as if seen from more than one angle at a time. And so we don't, you know, it doesn't look novel to us. But it, it's still, um, in Calgary at this time, it was a fairly avant-garde way to present um, still life elements. And here we see, in this image, um, Snow really working the lithography press, really working it. How can you blend, how can you layer, how much pigment do you need to create a certain degree of transparency, um, and so on and so forth. Um, this lithograph was made in an edition of four, so not very many. I think we can very safely that it was, it was a bit of an experiment as he um, became more experienced um, John Snow tended to make editions that were in the 20s, 30s, 40s um, not usually more than that it was a, a very important to him as it was to Maxwell Bates but more to John Snow that people in general recognized that his lithography images are original works of art. They are not posters. They are not postcards. They are not reproductions. They are not photographs. They are not copies. They are not made by a machine. They are made by the artist's hands. Each and every lithograph, if there are 30 of them in addition, then each of the 30 images has been made by the artist, has been handled by the artist, has been judged by the artist to be uh, appropriate to include in the edition. He was very much a craftsman in the old British tradition of William Morris, where craft was not a poor second cousin to art. Craft was, uh, was art, art that is made by hands, that is made by muscles, that is made by sweat even, um, and made by a person. If there's a machine involved, that's a tool of the person. But it's not a camera, it's certainly not a computer or anything of this sort. Anyway, this was one of John Snow's very um, dearest convictions and one that he never ceased to talk about. And John Snow was not a man who talked about much. One of the things he could always be made to comment on was the issue of reproductions, lithographs, copies, photographs, and so on. He wanted everybody to have 